Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Shop Talk. My name is Wes, and I'm a service technician here at the Porsche Center downtown Toronto. In today's video, we'll be looking at adaptive cruise control. This particular feature can be useful when doing long drives on open roads, such as highways. This way, you can maintain your speed without having to touch the accelerator pedal at all. We'll be taking a look at the different components and how they all work together as a system. Now, the first and most important component of the ACC system is the forward radar sensor, which can be found in the front of the vehicle in the center of the grille. This acts as the eyes of the system. The radar unit detects vehicles in front of us as we travel down the road. It's very important that this component stays clean. Things such as dirt, dust, ice and snow, and even heavy rain can impede the sensor from detecting vehicles in front of us. Also worth noting is whenever you're cleaning the front end of the vehicle, it's important to not use high pressure water or steam as those kinds of things can damage the radar sensor. Now we'll take a look at the components that are inside the vehicle. We'll have a look at the ACC menu in the instrument cluster, as well as the control stock on the side of the steering column. First things first, let's pull up the adaptive cruise control menu. To do this, we turn our attention to this gauge here in the instrument cluster. We'll use the scroll wheel in the steering wheel to navigate through the pages until we come to a page that looks just like this one. Now we'll turn our attention to the control stock here on the side of the steering column. If we press the button on the end of the stock, we can turn the system on. You can tell the system is on and ready when these symbols appear. One that resembles a small speedometer and a few dash marks just underneath. Those dash marks are just placeholders for where our set speed will appear once we're moving and it's been set. Now that the system has been activated, and once we begin traveling at speeds between 30 and 120 kilometers per hour, we can set and adjust our speed and the following distance, or the distance between us and the vehicle in front of us. Both of these can be adjusted using the stock we mentioned on the side of the steering column. Now that we're cruising down the highway and we've achieved the speed we want to set and maintain, we can set our speed by pushing the control stock forward once. This will set and lock in our current speed in the cruise control system. We can also adjust our current speed by moving the stock forward and backward to increase and decrease our speed respectively. Simply pushing the stock forward once or pulling it backwards once will increase or decrease our speed by one kilometer per hour. We can also press and hold the stock forward and pull and hold the stock backward to increase our speed in increments of 10 kilometers per hour. We can also set and adjust our following distance or the distance between our vehicle and the vehicle detected in front of us. This distance is illustrated by the bars in the center of the cruise control menu. To adjust these, we'll turn our attention down here to the control stock and specifically to this rocker switch on the front. Moving this up will increase our following distance and moving it down will decrease our following distance. It's important to remember that our following distance will always be relative to our speed. Therefore, the faster we're traveling, the greater the distance will be. The adaptive cruise control system will now maintain our set speed and following distance as we drive along. If traffic slows and comes to a stop, the system will bring our vehicle to a complete stop until traffic begins moving, at which point the cruise control will resume. Now, during these active stop and go situations, you may feel the brake pedal and the sensation may be different. You may also hear hydraulic sounding noises. These are all normal and do not indicate a fault in the system. In stop and go traffic situations, when the vehicle is stopped, it may set off again, even if there are obstacles in front of our vehicle. That's why it's important to pay attention and be prepared to brake at all times. The vehicle may not recognize smaller objects, such as pedestrians, bicycles, or motorcycles that appear in front of us. If at any point during our drive, the cruise control system detects that active braking on the part of the driver is necessary, an auditory and visual signal will appear on the cluster. If you witness these, it's important that you press the brakes immediately. Another thing worth remembering when driving with the system active 
is that occasionally vehicles moving in and out of our lane may not become detected until they are fully within the bounds of the lane in front of us. Also, if we are driving along sharp turns in the road, the system may detect a vehicle in the lane adjacent to ours if the bend is sharp enough. It's also worth noting that large vehicles with large loads that extend beyond the rear end of the vehicle may impede the function of the system to maintain an appropriate following distance. It's worth remembering and always remember to be prepared to brake in all situations. Now that we're driving down the road and our system has been turned on, let's have a look at some of the different statuses that the system can have, starting with the ready mode. We can tell ready mode by the speed and following distance icons appearing here in gray. When we switch to active mode by pushing the stock forward, these icons will switch to orange. Now the system is actively trying to maintain our set speed and following distance. To switch back into ready mode, we can press the brake pedal or move the control stock down. Switching back into ready mode, our icons will switch back to a gray color. If and when our forward radar sensor detects a vehicle in front of us, a small icon will appear just here above our set speed, as well as here in the center of the menu relative to our following distance bars. Adjusting our following distance will increase or decrease the distance between our vehicles as previously stated. Also worth noting, the small triangle that appears on the speedometer opposite our indicated speed indicates the speed of the vehicle we are currently following. <clears throat> One final operating mode that's worth knowing is the passive operating mode. So as we drive along and the system is active and we press on the accelerator, the ACC will switch to passive mode until we release the accelerator. Pressing the brake will switch us back into ready mode. To switch back out of this, we'll need to release the brake and push the stock forward again. We hope you found this episode of Shop Talk informative and that you may have learned a thing or two about your Porsche's adaptive cruise control system. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to give us a call here at the Porsche Center, downtown Toronto.